So now we're going to talk about uh, another factor in user authentication. That is something you have. So we're going to uh, talk about uh, this and to some extent it's also something you know uh, from a cryptographic perspective. Uh, but uh, from a general point of view, we, we are going to focus on something you have. So first we are going to uh, review uh, the essence of authentication to remind us about what uh, this actually is. And then we are going to talk about some uh, general cryptographic approaches and show how this uh, differs from what we've talked about before. And finally, we're going to talk about uh, anonymous credentials, which is uh, a particular uh, cryptographic uh, system for doing this. But uh, all cryptographic approaches uh, requires the user to have something because uh, no user can do these com uh, cryptographic computations in their head, so it's uh, going to be difficult. So, the essence of authentication. Now, uh, basically we, we have sort of seen this uh, before, but uh, we have not explicitly said it, but authentication is uh, in essence, a challenge response protocol. Now the verifier gives the prover a challenge and the prover responds to the verifier's challenge. So for instance, if we remind ourselves about passwords that we've talked about, then the verifier's challenge is what's the password and the prover's response is the password. Uh, so obviously the challenge is rather predictable in this case, yeah, but uh, the question is, can we make the secrets more hard to guess? Uh, because we needed that as we saw when we talked about passwords. And can we have different challenges with different responses? Yeah. The trivial solution would be that, yeah, we set 10 passwords for an account and then the, when we want to log in, the system asks us, okay, so what's password three? And then we have to type password three. And then the next time we log in, maybe the system asks us, so what's password uh, nine? And uh, then we have to type password nine. So, so that would be a trivial solution. Uh, but that, uh, that simply makes it 10 secrets to remember, which is more difficult. And an adversary must uh, do only 10 observations at worst. Uh, Statistically, he should get away with five, then he should have some good chances of uh, uh, actually having the password that the service asks for. Now, uh, the sort of solution here, I mean, this is a, not a concrete solution, it's a, it's a general solution. Uh, the reason we want challenge response is freshness and uh, password-based authentication that has the same challenge all the time, which is uh, not good. So an improvement would be a random challenge and a hard to guess uh, response. And we can do this uh, with cryptography. So we've already seen uh, Schnorr's protocol in the cryptography session. So the, uh, the Schnorr uh, Schnor protocol it uh, works like this. So we have the, the prover has a private key X and it has a public key G to the power of X, uh, where G is a generator for some group. So we do this modulo within that group. And uh, the prover wants to prove knowledge of X uh, for uh, some of Y here, which is the, the public key G to the power of X. And, uh, but the, the verifier doesn't know uh, that y is g to the power of x, so it just wants to know that uh, the prover knows a discrete logarithm for y here, and the discrete logarithm is exactly x, so the private key. Now, the prover uh, can do this by committing to some randomness r, and uh, 
the way the prover commits is to compute g to the power of r uh, and uh, we'll denote that value as t and then sends that to the verifier so the verifier does not know r at all but uh, the prover cannot change this r later uh, the verifier uh, simply replies with a random randomly chosen challenge c and uh, after the prover receives a C, the prover can compute this value S, which is the random value plus uh, C times X. And then uh, the verifier will accept if uh, G to the power of S is actually T times Y to the power of C. And we can see that uh, this will be the case if the prover has behaved uh, because of y to the power of c. Uh, we have y here is g to the power of x. So take g to the power of x uh, to the power of c. Then you have uh, y is uh, g to the power of uh, g, uh, cx. So this is uh, g to the power of uh, cx. And t here is simply g to the power of r. And these multiplied together, that becomes uh, g to the power of a r plus cx, which is exactly what s is here. So we, we have that these must be equal. So this uh, simply uh, has a lot of possibilities for random challenges. Uh, we can have a, a big challenge space here and the response uh, space is also uh, big. And we, we can make these as big as necessary. And this means that uh, we remember uh, from the zero knowledge property that this uh, protocol has that uh, someone observing this protocol happening uh, doesn't learn anything about x uh, which means that uh, which means that um, uh, they cannot uh, cannot later uh, fraudulently uh, try to trick a verifier that they are uh, this prover when they are in fact not uh, so the only the only way the adversary can can win this by observation is to uh, to observe uh, challenges and record responses and then uh, once the adversary uh, sees uh, gets the same challenge then he, he can submit the correct response but if we have a very large challenge space then the probability of the same challenge uh, coming twice is uh, very low so we, we can uh, be on the secure side. So that's not a, a possible way for the adversary to win. Now, we do need uh, password managers to handle our passwords, considering how many passwords we need and how uh, difficult uh, they should be from a guessability point of view. So then instead of a password, we might just as well use X. So this cryptographic approach uh, is actually uh, not that bad compared to, to passwords. Yeah, it's actually, um, it would actually improve the situation quite a lot. Um, because yeah, if we see how modern, uh, computer users work, I mean, it's coming to help have a helping device. So for instance, smartphones, they are quite ubiqu ubiquitous uh, nowadays. And uh, another advantage of this is that, yeah, we have this uh, Y here, which is the public key, and we put an emphasis on public. So that's the only thing that needs to be stored on the server. So no more leaked servers, uh, secrets from server hacks. Yeah, so. It's uh, all a uh, uh, win, basically, uh, to, to migrate to this type of uh, system instead of uh, staying with passwords. So the, the last uh, section here is anonymous credentials. So the idea here is that, yeah, the Schnorr protocol is identity-oriented. That's how, how it was presented. 
However, anonymous credentials, that's basically a generalization to include other attributes as well. And actually, their Schnorr protocol is a core component in how to construct these. So the anonymous credentials, they can do equalities and inequalities. So inequalities are useful for showing that your birth date is older, is uh, yeah, that you're older than a certain, your, your birthday is uh, happened before a certain date to show that you are uh, older than a certain age limit. You can do conjunctions so that you can show that you are older than this age limit, but uh, less than another age limit. And uh, you can do disjunctions that you should be either uh, younger than this or older than this. So for instance, for uh, student, uh, student and retired people's discounts for uh, public transport tickets, for instance, that's usually you should be younger than 18 uh, or you should be older than 65. Uh, so then you, it's, it makes sense to have a disjunction. And uh, you can prove knowledge of signatures so that you can actually show that these things are uh, signed by some authority that uh, the verifier trusts. So if we go back to the Bob, uh, the example of Bob going to the cinema when he wants to go see a film in cinema, Alice who works there wants to have a proof of his age. Now Bob has a certificate issued by someone Alice trusts. So for instance, uh, bank ID, you know, which is issued by uh, the banks and Alice probably trusts that uh, and uh, then Bob uh, doesn't want to show everything in this certificate because it has a lot of information. So he can just uh, use these anonymous credential system to prove that the certificate says that he's older than 50. Now, of course, this isn't implemented in bank ID, but it uh, would be uh, rather easy to, to tweak it to, to include this uh, type of system. And uh, this can, of course, be implemented in individual standalone services as well. So there are a few uh, different implementations. Uh, Identity Mixer by IBM and Uprove by Microsoft. There is Anon Pass, which is a research uh, project and it's uh, based on the same stuff as in uh, Identity Mixer. Uh, Identity Mixer has a few demos online, so you can check that out. And uh, Irma is uh, a, an implementation in, in a card yeah, for, for these uh, anonymous credentials. So these uh, anonymous credential systems, they, they make heavy use of uh, zero knowledge proofs of knowledge, uh, which is basically, uh, basically they use uh, a variance of the Schnorr protocol for this. And uh, yeah, as I said, they can prove equalities, inequalities, knowledge, ownership, and uh, a lot of different properties. Now that was everything uh, for this time. Thanks a lot.